some interesting things to see today. We got a big concrete pour going on out here. Or, well, it ain't. I say it's big. It's not really that big, but uh, they're pouring the footings and the slab at the same time. So it's actually uh, quite a bit that's got to be poured out there in one little spot. anchor bolts and everything got to be hanging in that in that concrete because they got the footings underneath you know they we dug those out and they got all the rebar and everything and uh, they're chalk lines through here it's going to be a, a nightmare digging out through this one this massive pipe conduit over here so i'm going to dress this up a little bit while uh, i'm waiting on them to do layout this will help them out it'll help us to get it dug out too so. anyway these guys didn't do a real neat job of back filling so we're going to help them out a little bit straighten it up somewhat can't cover up that hole. They got a test ball down in there. So anyway, backed up here. Kind of show you what I'm working on. Um, do some of it with the front end loader, but there's a lot of this is just too tight. Can't get to it. And maybe you can see that there pretty good. Got a little extra dirt up by the curb and uh, a little low, it's a little low in places, so just gonna try to flatten it out some.
we've got wide ditch down through here. Uh, that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be interesting, I think. It's gonna be a mess. ditches so clean or how I dig some uh, you know keep keep the top edges so clean on the ditches and I, I think I answered him with a, a few uh, tips or pointers or whatever you want to call them but the first thing to make a nice looking footings is to get your your setup right on your machine you got to get in the right position Doesn't matter how you do it, if you don't get your machine set up properly at the beginning of it, you'll never get a nice looking ditch. It'll always be crooked. Uh, Mini X is a little different to deal with than a backhoe. I'm gonna just look at it from the backhoe point of view. Um, there's probably guys out there that's dug more footage with a, with a Mini X that could give you, you know, a lot of better pointers on that, like how you like how you need to set up your machine to get it to pull straight. Uh, the, the thing with the backhoe is, is anytime I set my pivot pin in the right position up here where the swing is, if I get that set right, as in relation to my layout, if I put my bucket in the ground at the same place every time and I, I make a small cut, it should pull straight back to me. Now, there are rocks and there are things in the dirt sometimes that pushes, there's one right there that's lifting me up, but you have to deal with those. Um, every, every job's a little different. But when you make a good small level cut uh, over a longer pass, you'll get a straighter ditch than if you try to make a really deep cut real quick. And it, it just, it allows your machine to, uh, there it is. I'll put it this way, it, if you're just hogging dirt, you're not gonna get a nice ditch because the dirt has to build it to uh, come out of the hole and into your bucket. So 
And if you just stick your bucket in the ground and just rip, you're going to get a bad looking, you're going to blow the top of the ditch out for one thing, but also another thing that happens when you, when you take big cuts and you hit a rock or something like that, it throws you off course uh, worse than if you hit a rock when you're making a shallow cut. And the reason for that is if you make a shallow level cut, now, now right now I'm digging a box, so I'm gonna dig back a little bit off this edge here, but um, if you make a shallow cut, and I hope there ain't no pipe out here, I don't know where the pipes are. If you're making a shallow level cut and you come across the rock, your bucket will bump up over. Sometimes it'll, it'll give the rock a place to move. Not always. I mean, sometimes it, if the rocks are up toward the top of the ditch, it's really bad because they usually that they're usually take the side of the ditch out. But you just got to be patient. You can't you can't do this job and just try to stick the bucket in the ground as fast as you can and get a load every time. And you're not always going to have a full bucket every time you come out. There's a lot of passes, you'll see I've got a half a bucket full of dirt, or less. Uh, it's even worse with a one foot bucket or a smaller bucket. This one loads pretty good, but in this type of soil here, um, if, if I try to force a full load every pass on there, I'm going to be pushing dirt out on both sides of that bucket. So, as far as, you know, other other methods or other things that uh, you know keeping your machine in the right position keep it level um, and carry a level in your machine just to see if you are level I mean I, I've gotten to the point with, with this machine I can usually tell if it's level looks like we're going to go deeper on these dig out these bigger boxes first and then I'm going to come back with a one foot bucket and start digging out the, the footings in between them. If I had a quick connect it would probably save time to dig these as we go but it's not that hard to get back in over these. I mean they're they're not that. And this, is, this is a pretty simple one so it's not really that big of a deal but if we were to dig these boxes with the one foot bucket it'd take forever so this is the fastest way we can we can do it the most efficient uh, most effective way to do it right here for, for for this machine and for the way i'm set up i can say if i had a quick connect i could drag the bucket along with me and swap them out and dig it but uh, not that necessary it doesn't take that long to change the bucket out and if you if you plant it right you can get all the big ones dug out and then you just change one time and, and uh, that's all you got to do so but one of the one of the things I want to talk to you about on backhoes that I've never seen a mini X that can dig a straight wall on a box like this sitting this close to it and you know this this box is almost five foot deep and we're digging a straight wall and that's only about what is that 12 feet over there something like that any mini x i've ever been on don't have enough curl out on the bucket to do that so that's another reason the back goes better for this type of work it's uh it's just you know the, the bucket curl out makes it super easy to do that so what I do on layout or checking to see if I'm in line to layout is I'll set it down there and then I'll check it out there run back up your string line and it looks like I'm out just a little bit so I'm gonna move over about an inch and then uh, we'll check it again if you don't get this part right I don't care who you are or what you're doing it's really really hard uh, or what machine, doesn't matter what machine you're on either. If you don't get this part right, uh, you won't have a straight 
ditch and uh, even though I've done this for thousands of hours I still I still have to double check you know it's it's not I mean there are there are cases where I can just pull in and get lined up and every now and then I get lucky on the first try but I still like to check it it's just about the time you think you got it figured out you'll uh, you'll figure out you don't so anyway but like I say there's just there's there's not any real big secrets to this um, sharp teeth if you don't have teeth that are wider than your bucket, and when I say sharp, that's what I'm talking about. Your teeth need to be beyond the edges of your bucket. It helps if they're sharp too, but if your teeth are not wider than the bucket, whenever you go to pull out of the hole, you will always be busting that top edge off the hole. Now, a situation like this is a little different where we're digging a big hole. And on this one, I have to be careful not to let my bucket slide over to the side that's already got a hole dug out. So I'm going to be constantly watching to see, and you have to sight down your ditch. You just have to watch it all the time. And, it, and when you see it, if you see a bow in it or you see, you know, a spot that looks like it's not quite lined up, fix it. Uh, you know, that's... I don't dig perfectly straight ditches. Now that's a secret. <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell anybody. But nobody can really dig a perfectly straight ditch. The thing about it is, is I know how to keep them looking straight. So if you keep your ditches looking straight, nobody's ever going to question whether or not they're straight. Now what I mean by that is you'll have a little bow in the ditch well, if you take a little bit of extra time and just use your side cutter and just straighten that little bow out, the ditch will look straight. Uh, the ditch will be a little bit wider out there where you fixed it, but not very much, usually, if you're not too far out. But that's how you, uh, that's how you make a straight ditch. We're dealing with dirt. Dirt's one of the hardest things to work with. Um, it's all different. This dirt in here, the, the top part of it stands up really well. You can see I've got chunks of asphalt. I've got chunks of concrete occasionally. I've seen a few sticks. Um, pieces of pipe, lots of ends. And when you come across that stuff, don't force your way through it you try to work it out of the hole without tearing everything up and that that takes just a little bit of extra time but anyway I don't know that I don't know that it's real easy for me to explain it a lot of this you just got to figure it out on your own um, I learned the reason I got good at it is because I, the biggest reason is because my dad used to dig footings and that's how uh, I used to work with him. He had a plumbing company but he would dig footings for some of the guys he did plumbing for and he was darn good at it and man, they, you go look at his footings when he got done and uh, they just look perfect. I had followed in the footsteps of somebody that didn't really give a crap about how they did their work. Um, I wouldn't even know you could do that. I mean, it, you, I wouldn't even think this was possible. I'd, I'd probably say, hey, I'd straighten up, you know. So, and then I've, I've came across a couple of other guys that, that are pretty good at it too. And they, you know, that kind of backed up what my dad showed me is, Michael's a pretty capable machine of making nice looking ditches. Of course my dad, he can do it with a dozer, backhoe, whatever, whatever you put him on, he, he make it look good. So, just, you know, one of the biggest things on a backhoe is expectations. It's what you expect out of it.
I'm not really just pushing this thing real fast today. I'm not in a big hurry, though. You know, we've got a lot to do here. There's no reason just to be trying to tear through this as fast as you can because it doesn't, this, this type of soil doesn't work like that. You have to, uh, you have to work with it. But anyway, that's a, that's a pretty cool looking little box right there. But on a deep one like this, I always turn sideways and trim up the near side. It's, uh, on the shallow ones, you can usually trim the near side up without moving, but on the deep ones like this, it's better. It always turns out better if you turn sideways and just clean that edge up. But this hole's five foot wide and about five foot deep. I don't know, is that eight foot long or something like that? So. But learning how to dig square corners and, and flat straight walls, and you can you can see that one on the that wall to my left there is not exactly straight. It's got a it's got a little bit of a bow in it from top to bottom, but for the most part it ain't too bad. A lot of times on this side, I'll leave it a little bit shy and then I'll come back in and trim it out bigger. And it just makes uh, makes it look a lot cleaner. There again, appearance is everything when you're trying to make nice footing. it takes a lot of time to figure out your machine and what a where the tip of that bucket is when you can't see it and it's I'm going to go ahead and do a, a straight cut down here I don't know that I got that quite right there a little bit too deep, I don't know. Like I say, I'm not perfect. So what you what you look for though is just uh, looking at something and something sticks out to you and just take some time and fix it that's about all I can tell you on the subject other than just practice work at it um, you're not going to be a lazy operator and make nice ditches if if you're uh, I've, I've came across some operators that I think are a little bit on the lazy side and uh what I mean by lazy is they don't take the time 
try to keep the ditch straight, neat, clean. Do, to do this, you have to work at it. That's just, there, there's no way around it. You gotta work at it. And a lot of people say, well, sitting in a backhoe is easy work. There is a lot harder physical labor, I'm not gonna lie. Um, it, I think it's a, it is a fairly easy job. An old man like me can do it without a lot of, you know, it's, it's not too bad. But, there are different levels of how you handle your job. I mean, if you work harder at an easy job, you can still do it better. Kind of what I'm trying to say. Your attitude is probably your most important thing. if you got a bad attitude um, you can be the best you can be the best at doing something I don't care what it is you can be the best there is but if your attitude bad it's it's gonna be working against you all the time anyhow 